Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to cover a server motherboard from Gigabyte, Gigabyte MC12LE0. This is an AMD AM4 motherboard and I have got it from my subscriber Jerome and I'm very thankful for that. I've been eyeing this motherboard for a while but never decided to buy it and now I have got this pleasant surprise. So first, let's briefly go through the technical specification of this Gigabyte B550 motherboard. Unsurprisingly, we get AMD AM4 socket for AMD Ryzen 3000 and 5000 CPUs. According to the Gigabyte specification, the motherboard supports CPUs up to Ryzen 9 5950X, even though the VRM on this motherboard is rather basic. I did not have a chance to test the motherboard with the Ryzen 9 or even Ryzen 7. I have here Ryzen 5 3600, so I cannot confirm or deny that. But according to the Gigabyte specification, 5950X shall work on this motherboard. Then we have four DDR4 memory slots, and you can use a standard desktop UDIM DDR4 memory as well as ECC UDIM memory. Here it is important to specify that ECC UDIM and ECC registered memory are not the same. ECC UDIM is usually much harder to find and it is often double the price. Still, if you badly need ECC, this motherboard supports ECC memory and you can get that. Then, next to the memory slots we have this 8-pin CPU power, which is located rather inconveniently because the cable will cover these extra components around, but what's more annoying is this 24-pin motherboard power connector. I don't know what Gigabyte thought when they placed this connector at this side, because this latch or this hook is totally blocked when you install memory modules and it is not possible to connect or disconnect power supply when memory sticks are installed. In this corner we also have a 4-pin connector for a CPU fan, then additionally we have 3 over here and 2 over here. Already now I can say that smart fan function on this motherboard is very limited. We have only single configuration that applies to all six connectors and the smart fan function works with the 4-pin PWM fans only. You cannot install here 3-pin voltage regulated fans because those will work at 100% rotation speed. Next to these fan connectors we have a TPM 2.0 header. This header is mostly useless, but if you need an external TPM module, it's available here. Then we have four SATA ports over here and two extra SATA ports over here. Additionally, we have this kind of USB 2.0 port, which can be used to directly install a flash drive that can be used to install TrueNAS or Unraid. Following this corner we have these pins for the front panel, here we have buttons and LEDs. It works, but it is annoying that it is not uh, following the common pattern and you need to read the manual to figure out what to connect where. Then we have a USB 3.0 connector for the front panel, USB 2.0 connector for the front panel, something I don't remember what it is, another connector, I'm not sure what it is, and this connector is used to connect some sort of a back panel or back plate to install SATA HDDs or SATA SSD drives in the servers or racks. Then over here we have a PCI Express 4.0x4 slot and over here we have PCI Express 4.0x16 slot. Both of these PCI Express slots are connected directly to the CPU and this x16 slot can be bifurcated for x8, 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 x4, x4 or 4x4. Finally, this M.2 slot is connected to the chipset and it works at PCI Express 3.0 x1. So if you need some uh, fast data transfer, then you need to use one of these PCI Express x16 or x4 slots and this M.2 slot can be used for a system drive to install your Unraid, TrueNAS or some other operating system where you don't do too many reads or writes. The last but definitely not the least component of this motherboard is this IPMI module SP2500. With this SP2500 IPMI module you have possibility to remotely control the motherboard, you can connect through the Ethernet, you can have a remote desktop, you can even go to the BIOS, you can update the BIOS, um, you can also reinstall your system and basically you get remote access to your computer with possibility to turn it on and off. 
On the back side of the motherboard you will find VGA video output which is connected to this uh, SPID IPMI module as well as three network ports. Two of these are standard to one gigabit Ethernet adapters and one is connected to this SPID IPMI module that can be used for remotely controlling this motherboard. Since this is a Surrey motherboard, I'm going to review and evaluate it from the Surrey point of view. If you're looking to build a desktop computer or a workstation, there are other better alternatives. So let's start with Gigabyte MC12 LE0 good points. First of all, I really like the IPMI AST2500. With this remote control module or intelligent platform management interface, you have possibility to control your entire device through network. You have a remote desktop connection, you can turn off and turn on your device, you can update BIOS, you can reinstall system, basically you get full remote access to your device. PCI Express connectivity is the next plus in my list. The motherboard has PCI Express X16 and X4, which are PCI Express 4.0, connected straight to the CPU. The PC Express X16 slot can be bifurcated for X8, X8 or X4, 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 X4 or any other configuration you want. So if you have splitters or adapters, you can connect up to four devices to the PC Express X16 slot. Unfortunately, that means that M.2 slot is limited to the chipset connectivity and it works at PC Express 3.0 X1 speed. Nevertheless, for a server, I prefer this configuration when the PC Express slots are free and you can install whatever you want instead of dedicating these precious PC Express lanes to the M.2 slot. Then, unlike many other budget motherboards that come with only four SATA ports, Gigabyte MC12 has six SATA ports, and this is more than enough for most of the home NAS builders. The next plus in my list is the ECC memory support. Yes, we cannot use ECC registered memory, we are limited to ECC UDIMs, but if you need that extra layer of protection and extra layer of integrity for your data, then you have ECC option with Gigabyte MC12 LE0, which is not available with most of the Intel alternatives. And the last, but definitely not the least plus of Gigabyte MC12 is the power consumption. This motherboard is one of the most power-efficient AMD AM4 motherboards I have ever tested. My entire system that consists of the motherboard, the memory, the M.2 slot, a couple of fans at idle consumes 20 to 25 watts of electricity. Every other motherboard I have tested in this very configuration consume about 35-45 watts of electricity and the other motherboards do not have IPMI on board. Thus, if power consumption is very critical for you, but you still need some serious CPU power, then Gigabyte MC12 could be a good option with something like Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9. Now, let's move to the list of bad things, or at least the things I dislike about this Gigabyte motherboard. First of all, I really dislike that the smart fan function is so limited. We have only single configuration, which applies to all six fan connectors. We also do not have fine grain control, and we cannot control speed of 3-pin voltage-regulated fans. So it is single configuration that applies to all connectors and it works with 4-pin PWM fans only. The next negative thing is uh, the rear I.O. There we have only two USB ports and I believe it is uh, way too little. I don't think the motherboard would be that much more complicated if Gigabyte would add their two extra USB ports, but at the same time it would make life much easier when you need to connect a keyboard, mouse and a USB flash drive to install your operating system. One gigabit Ethernet adapters can also be considered as a negative thing. If the motherboard would come with a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapters, it would be next to perfect. The rest of the complaints I have in my list are pretty much irrelevant if you use the motherboard as a server or as a NAS device, 
but I still think it is worth mentioning and you need to know about them. So the motherboard does not have fail boot recovery, so if for example you try to overclock your memory and the system fails to boot, you need to clear CMOS to get your system booting up again. Unlike most of the modern consumer boards, Gigabyte MC12 LE0 does not have an option to restore BIOS settings to the previously known working configuration and boot from there. Also, my particular motherboard came to me with a way too old BIOS. The BIOS was so old that it is no longer available on the Gigabyte page and I failed to install Windows 11. The installation would go through, but then system would go into infinite boot loop. After installing the latest BIOS from Gigabyte page, this issue went away and Windows 11 works without any hiccups. To update the BIOS you would need an older CPU like Ryzen 5 3600 in my case, because the motherboard does not have a BIOS flashback function to update the BIOS without a CPU. It is also possible to update the BIOS through IPMI, but I'm not entirely sure how it works, I did not want to risk breaking my motherboard, so I didn't test it. So I don't know if you need a compatible CPU for IPMI BIOS update, or it can update the BIOS even if your CPU is not currently supported by the motherboard. In any case, if you plan to buy Gigabyte MC12 LE0 motherboard, be ready that you might need to source an older Ryzen 5 3600 or similar CPU to get the motherboard booted and BIOS updated. Then the BIOS, even the latest revision, does not have XMP or RAM voltage. You still have an option to adjust memory speed and tighten the RAM timings, but it is not possible to apply XMP profile and it is not possible to set RAM voltage through the BIOS. It is also not possible to overclock your CPU, but we have an option for AMD PBO or Precision Boost Overdrive, just a fancy name for automatic overclocking of AMD Ryzen CPUs. If against all the odds you want to overclock memory and CPU on your server build, then you can use AMD Ryzen Master through Windows to control BIOS settings. Using AMD Ryzen Master it is possible to set RAM voltage, it is possible to set RAM speed and it is possible to overclock your CPU. These settings are saved in the BIOS and they stick even if you reboot or reinstall your system until you clear CMOS of your motherboard. And finally, I have to mention that Gigabyte MC12 motherboard does not support sleep mode. If you're building a server or a NAS device, it doesn't matter, but if you plan to build a workstation using the motherboard, it is important to know that the sleep mode doesn't work here. In conclusion, I can say that Gigabyte MC12 LE0 has its pluses and minuses. If you plan to build a small server or a NAS device, then this motherboard is next to ideal. With the current asking price from 5200 euros, I struggle to find something better than this. On the other side, if you're planning to build a gaming computer or a workstation, there are numerous other better alternatives than Gigabyte MC12 LE0. And with this I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and somehow useful. Bye for now and see you in the next videos.